Hi, I'm Courtney at womenlivingwell.org, the home of Good Morning Girls. And this week we completed week two in our Bible study of rest and release. Now, a couple weeks ago, I made a YouTube where I talked a little bit about some of the difficult things that I've been through. So if you've missed that video, I encourage you to go back and watch it. It's titled A Heart to Heart Chat. But as a result of what I've been through, that also means that my children have gone through um, a difficult season of life. And, and so last year at the end of school year, in the month of June, I decided to take the kids and just get away, that we just needed to head down to the beach. So we packed our swimsuits and our boogie boards and our suitcases, and we hopped in the car, and I drove us 12 hours to the beach to rest and release. But before we left, I thought, you know, I want to have devotions with them. And what is the one thing that I want them to know? And so I sat down and I began to write devotions. And the one thing I want them to know is how much God loves them. Because you know when you go through a difficult time, we can be tempted to think, does God really love me? And I want to answer that question for them emphatically, yes, a million times, yes, God loves you. You know, when they were babies, I used to rock them, and when they were toddlers, and I would sing the song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. You know, I know God loves us because the Bible tells me so. And I want them to know that. And now they are 12 and they're 14, and I want to give them concrete examples of ways that God loves us. And so what came out on paper for those five days of devotions are the five days of devotions that you did this past week in your Bible study. Only for them, I got a little more creative and I went out and I bought a poster board and I packed it and I packed some uh, a black Sharpie and painter's tape and I, I hung this poster board up on the hotel bathroom door and then each night they would sit on the beds and we would fill in the row. We talked about the potter and the clay and we listed some of the things that they've created that matter to them and you know, and I talked about how you know God created you and, and you matter so much more to him than those things that you've created that matter to you. And then we talked about the shepherd and the sheep and, and how God is our shepherd. And just like our little sheep or our little snowball, our dog, you know, we love our dog. We take care of her. And, and in, re, in response to that, every time we come home, she just does a victory lap around the, the house. She's so excited to see us. And so I said, you know, that's the kind of relationship the shepherd has with the sheep. We should love our shepherd so much and celebrate time with him. And he loves us and he is taking care of us. And so I wanted them to know this. And, and this is the same thing when I sat down in July and I began to write this Bible study Rest and Release. I realized uh, these are the same principles that we need to know as adults. We need these concrete examples to see how much we are loved by God. And so we went down through these examples and um, we realize, I think, as we did our study this week, I hope that you realize, as you realize how loved you are, that you can let go of all your worries and all your fears. You know, I've spent many nights worried sick over the future of my children. And really, truly, worry can make you sick. And it is a sin. It is not good for us. But you know, 1 John 4, 18 tells us that perfect love casts out fear. That God's love is perfect. And so we shouldn't live our lives in fear. We can be free from that. And so right now, I just want you to pause. And I want you to think about how have you experienced God's love over your lifetime? Maybe in the last month or year or two years. And I want you to write it down. It's so important that we see the hand of God, the way he's provided, the way he has already worked out situations in our life, or how he has provided friendships and uh, finances and food. I am sure that chips and guacamole are from the hand of God. <laughs> you know, I mean, they are a blessing. And even when I think globally about what others are going through, when you see the uh, floods and the hurricanes, when we see the earthquakes, we realized um, just how blessed we are and how much God is taking care of us. It's so important that we see God in that, that we see God in creation, in the sunrise and the sunset and, and the ocean and the changing of the fall leaves and, and all the beauty, all creation speaks his name. And God draws us in through his creation. He created us in his image and just like we want to be want, wanted and desired and pursued, he wants to be wanted and desired and pursued. He wants to have a relationship with us. And when we have that intimacy with God, that is when our worries and our fears fade away. 
But sometimes Satan comes to us and he tempts us to, to think that maybe God doesn't love us. And so I want to give us some truth here today. From Romans 8, it says, in Romans 8, verse 37, it says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And sometimes we think, you know, maybe I can do something wrong. You know, there is nothing that can measure the love of God. You know, this can measure 25 feet. And, um, but this scripture says there's no height, there's no depth. There is nothing that gets out of his reach. This iPhone I used to tell time, but this says in scripture that there is nothing in the present or the future that can separate us from God. He is eternal. He is permanent. So how do we measure God's love? We measure it with the cross. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and when we accept him into our lives, we come into a loving relationship with him. We can trust him with all of our worries and fears. We can rest in him. And so that's what I want to encourage you to do this week. I encourage you to keep lighting your candles and praying. I encourage you to enjoy those uh, flowers, hopefully, that you put in your kitchen this week. And remember the love of your maker that he has for you. And then this coming week, the new challenge is that we will sing and that we will worship. Uh, the science tells us that when we sing, we, re uh, we release happy endorphins in our brains. So I think we need a little happy, don't we? So let's this week, let's sing out to the Lord and let's continue to rest in him. Keep walking with the King.